We are getting further and further off the beaten path. We are all alone out here. There is not another human being for miles and miles. The obstacles continue to get deeper and more and more treacherous. It's a tall task for the Sprinter van. There's thunderstorms all around me right now. This weather is a bit in turmoil. It's racing out across there, completely engulfing those other rocks and cliffs. God, I love this stuff. This is so freaking cool. I think at this point, I even just stop trying to explain and I just let the visuals speak for themselves. Because this place is incredible. It's one gift after another after another as this landscape changes mile by mile. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is a desert sunrise in a massive, expansive sky. We've got ourselves hung up here pretty decently. That could be catastrophic. Well, this is certainly not the kind of situation you want to find yourself in at this time of day. The light is fading fast about another hour and a half of daylight. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the adventure. Let's go see what today brings out here in the open desert.
guys. It's Chad with Living the Van Life. I find myself here again out here in southeast Utah. We're out here for another overlanding and van life adventure. I've crawled my way all the way up here to the base of the San Rafael Reef. It's an incredible geological creation. Stunning rock formations that leaves you questioning how they even exist. It's pretty crazy. Got a bit of a camp spot here this evening, just a few miles off the highway. I'll post up here and see what the adventure brings for tomorrow. But for right now, let's have a look around here and see what this place is all about. I'm always in complete awe of the geological structures that have formed here over the years in this area. And the diversity, it makes it a perfect spot to come out and explore. It's never ending. Got a late start to this adventure here this evening. The sun has gone down on the backside of the reef, so I'm just gonna build a quick, simple campfire before we get the rest of this adventure started here tomorrow. You know, there's just something special about a campfire. I'm so glad to be back around campfires again. There was quite a few months in the Pacific Northwest this summer where we weren't allowed to have campfires because of burn ban and fire weather. But now being back out here in the desert, it's good to be having campfires each night. It's something about it. It's a great way to finish off a day of exploring out here in the desert. Thank you. 
Good morning everyone. I'm just waking up here this morning. Had a pretty great night's sleep out here just below the San Rafael Swell. Waking up this morning to what could potentially turn into an epic sunrise. We've got some clouds in the sky and in my honest opinion those are the perfect ingredients for a majestic sunrise. We'll see what happens here in the next few minutes. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is a desert sunrise. Right there. Just another reason to come out here and experience this in the desert. It's the sunrises in the massive, expansive sky. So freaking cool. light is changing so quickly. Part of the challenge of trying to capture all this stuff it happens so quick and they change so fast. I want to catch stuff with the camera. I want to catch stuff with the drone. I want to enjoy it myself. It poses a little bit of a challenge when everything happens so quickly. Well, we'll put the drone up see what we can find anyways. turned out to be a little bit blustery around camp here this morning but nonetheless I've got the outdoor kitchen pulled out of the back of the van here and cooking up a quick breakfast before we hit the trail Just like that, breakfast is served. Well, 
but we got nothing but the open trail ahead of us today. A day wide open for going out and exploring this amazing area here in southeastern Utah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the adventure. Let's go see what today brings out here in the open desert. So I was just cruising down the trail here and I had to stop because I had a, a, an epiphany. And I was thinking to myself as I was out here driving around, and it came to me that over on livingthevanlife.com, there's hoodies available. It's getting cold out. Get yourself a Live in the Van Life hoodie. They're super comfortable, honestly. Like, I wear the heck out of mine. I never wash it because I just enjoy wearing it. And probably after being out here in the dusty Utah dirty desert, probably needs a wash, but freaking love those things. Anyways, you can get yourself Living the Van Life hats, Living the Van Life stickers. Check it out. It came to me, so I figured I had to stop this video in its tracks. Just to let you guys know, livingthevanlife.com. Go check it out. As I always keep preaching on this trip, the last couple videos, that the terrain is constantly changing. Here just moments ago, I was down along the San Rafael Reef, an incredible geological formation. And I now I'm out in the Goblin Valley region and these cliffs behind me, another geological creation that continues to blow my mind out here in Southern Utah. This weather is a bit in turmoil. There's thunderstorms all around me right now. I'm watching this dust storm blow down this valley. A matter of 10 minutes ago, the weather was calm. And now it's racing out across there, completely engulfing those other rocks and cliffs. But I'm definitely thankful for the shelter of the van and its capabilities to get me through inclement weather like this. It's like having a Mars rover out here exploring the planet. further out here into the backcountry. We are all alone out here. There is not another human being for miles and miles.
getting further and further off the beaten path, the obstacles continue to get deeper. The approach angles and the departure angles are becoming more and more treacherous. It's these big washes that we've got to get ourselves through. It's a tall task for the Sprinter van, but so far it's been freaking champing it. Let's see how it does through this one. This is certainly not the kind of situation you want to find yourself in at this time of day. The light is fading fast. Maybe got about another hour, hour and a half of daylight before it's going to get dark. Unfortunately, on this end of things, there is no good winch point. So I am left to the shovel and the pickaxe. Luckily, I've come prepared at least with that. We've got everything we need to survive right here in the van. So there's no need to panic. We'll work on getting our way out of here. Let's see what it takes. We've got ourselves hung up here pretty decently, and it's that damn departure angle gets me every time. I'll take a look, assess the situation, but that is why we come with proper tools, i.e. shovels, pickaxes, etc. I think we'll be able to dig down a little bit and get ourselves unstuck. They're definitely in a bit of a doozy right now. Usually these tools are over my head when I'm parked on flat ground. That shows you just how steep of an angle we're stuck at right now. But the pickaxe. And the shovel. I think one of the most important things in a scenario like this is to just remain calm. Take a few deep breaths think about the situation and work through it methodically there's no need in getting yourself all in a rush and that's just going to cause more work for you so I got my tools out I'm going to start digging away here Tell you what, this pickaxe right here is saving the day right now. The crazy thing is, I just picked this up three days ago out in Moab. In my head, I envisioned a scenario like this where I got stuck in a hard pan where a shovel just wouldn't cut it. And here we are. Trusting that intuition, it goes a long ways. And probably, hopefully, it's going to save the day today. I'm able to relieve pressure underneath the back bumper get the suspension to settle so I can get traction back on the rear axle these are all the tailings that I've removed from underneath the bumper there's a lot of material holding that thing up Well, the good news is I can hear the suspension settling. We're starting to get enough material out from underneath the back. All 
right, this is good. This is good. Oh yeah, making progress. Getting traction back here on this wheel. We can tell how much progress we're making because the box is almost sitting on the dirt now too. There it is. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, we might not be done digging yet, but I think I've got enough dirt removed from underneath it to where the suspension has settled back down. We got traction back on the tires. I think we can at least move this thing and reassess our situation. I'm going to try backing up. I think that's our best bet right now. And then I can fill in some holes and work our way up out of here. So do you guys know what the moral to this story is in this situation right here? Now most of you, I'm sure, are thinking something like, don't go out into the backcountry solo. Don't drive through stuff that you're not sure you can get through. Those might be viable options. But the true moral to the story is, don't come out here unprepared without the proper tools to get yourself out. And for you Sprinter van owners and all the other overlanders that have the $300, $400 little tiny shovel on the back of your toolbox, and you think that's gonna get you out of situations like this, think again. Do yourself a favor, go to the hardware store, buy a real shovel for $30 and a pickaxe, and that'll get you out of some situations. Don't waste your money on the tiny shovels. They might be good for putting out a fire, but you got a jug of water that can do that for you. I would have been stuck here for another week if all I had was a $400 Overlander shovel strapped to the back of my van. Let's see if we can get this bad boy out. Just like that, we got her up out of there. It's a little digging, having the right tools on board. A little bit of patience, staying calm. You can get yourself through some things for sure. But look at this place right now. I can't think of a better spot to be stuck than out here in the wilderness of Southern Utah. The only person around for miles and miles. And we're stuck in a wash. <laughs> Well, we were stuck in a wash. We got ourselves out. High five to all you guys. Help get me through this right here. The words of encouragement. Well, here I am. I'm knelt down here in the bottom of this wash. And you can see with the van straddled it, it's pretty deep. This might be a crazy idea, but I think the best way out of here is gonna be continuing forward. Before I do that, I'm gonna take some of this dirt that I dug out and fill in the low spots here, make sure that we get enough clearance to get ourselves out of here. But the hard part's been done. I think it'd be foolish to try and go backwards. Could potentially get ourselves more stuck. So a little bit more shoveling and we'll go forward and get out of here. Oh, 
you know what? There's a lot of lessons to be learned in scenarios like this. You learn the limits of your vehicle, you learn the limits of yourself, and you learn how to push through them. Learning the capabilities of you and your vehicle, that's important to coming out here into the backcountry. So I chalk this up as to a good lesson, and we're gonna make the best of it. From here, let's see if we can get this thing up and out of here. I think it's time. Perseverance. Just gotta persevere. Well, that was just about two hours worth of work to get this thing up and out of that position. The good news is we're unstuck. The bad news is it's dark, and now I gotta go find a camp spot here in the dark and I am in the middle of nowhere. That's always an adventure. Let's go see what we can get ourselves into or out of. I'm ready for bed, that's for sure. Alright guys, I am shutting it down for the night. That was a long afternoon. It is a beautiful spot out here. I wish I was spending more time enjoying it rather than getting myself out of it. But, this is all part of the adventure when you choose to come out and do this kind of stuff. So, I'm thankful to have had the correct tools to get myself out of that situation. But now, I'm going to just kick back here inside the van and enjoy some van life. The good old fashioned way of inside a van. Alright guys, we'll catch you guys in the morning for some more adventure and see what comes tomorrow. morning guys just waking up here this morning you know there's something to be said about getting to a camp spot during the light you kind of get the opportunity to establish yourself in that particular spot you know the surroundings set up your home mark your territory but getting to a camp spot in the middle of the dark when all you can see is what's in front of your headlights it's a little different scenario but waking up here this morning, now I get to discover these beautiful surroundings that I slept in last night. And to be able to wake up in a scene like this and start out your day like that, pretty freaking cool. This is living van life right here, way out in the backcountry on an overlanding adventure. We got a whole lot more adventure yet to come here today. Let's go do some exploring, see what's next.
definitely thankful to be a filmmaker here in 2023 when we have the technology to capture the things we see with drones. It's such an amazing tool for telling stories, especially when we're out in terrain like this where it's nearly impossible to show the scale of where we're at with just a camera here on the ground. that little unit just out there roaming the planet like a little rover doing some cinematic research bringing back all the data I feel like we're out here exploring planets wait a second kind of are it's just planet earth it's still one of the planets what it's true whatever a guy can pretend. It's kind of what it feels like out here, you know? It's got this little habitat on wheels. Roaming the planet. Getting myself stuck. Getting myself unstuck. Doing cinematic research. I don't know. It's kind of like a science. Whatever. It's just my thoughts. Those are the thoughts that run through my head as I'm driving around out here in the wilderness by myself. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. We got things to go explore. It's just, it's not, it's not right. This isn't, this isn't fair. <laughs> just when I think I've got a place figured out, then I come around the corner and I'm greeted with this.
I think at this point I even just stop trying to explain and I just let the visuals speak for themselves because this place is incredible. It's just one gift after another after another as this landscape changes mile by mile out here in the backcountry. God, I love this stuff. This is so freaking cool. One of the things that I love about being out here on the road solo is that you're left to your own thoughts and your own devices whether that's good or bad. But the things that I like to think about are what is it that we don't know? What is it that we don't know about this planet, about this universe, about us as a human species? Now I know a lot of people like to get all religious in the comments when I have these kinds of conversations and I'm not interested in getting into any of that. More so I just like being out here in the moment thinking about what is it that we don't know. I don't think I want to know the answers. I like the idea of the unknown always pondering. Always pondering the answers. That'll definitely keep you entertained when you're out on the road in these scenes by yourself. Hell yeah. Freaking love it. Well, I'd say this feels like home for the evening, wouldn't you say? I love myself a good camp spot high atop a plateau overlooking these desert vistas. Doesn't get any better than this. Hell yeah, this will be home for the evening. Hell yeah. Well, this wind is just nasty out here right now. It's not the perfect conditions for cooking a meal over a campfire. So in the meantime, I'm gonna do a little bit of food prep before I build the fire, hopefully after this wind dies down a bit.
some tomatoes, tomato paste. I've got some couscous with some chicken bone broth. Some seasoning. sausage. Now in this case I like to take the links and cut them up into meatball sized pieces and then it becomes like meatballs inside the dish. I tell you what, this wind adds a whole nother level of stress to cooking over a campfire and especially filming it while the light is fading very, very quickly in the west and it's getting darker and darker. But I think we're finally to a point where I can take a deep breath and know that dinner is cooking inside the Dutch oven right now. I'm looking forward to this because it's been a long day on the trail and I am starving. like dinner is ready. We got couscous, we got mushrooms, we got onions, tomatoes, Italian sausage, all cooked here in the Dutch oven in a one pot meal over a campfire out here in the desert of Utah. Hell yeah, let's keep this warm. Let's serve it up. It's still blustery out there. Man, I am so excited for this. Heck yeah. It smells delicious. Looks delicious. I hope it tastes delicious. The great thing is, we got some for leftovers. That means dinner and lunch for the next few days. Parmesan cheese. Look at that. Bon appetit. Dinner is served. I tell you what, it's nights like this where I really appreciate the shelter of the Sprinter van. It's blustery still outside and it's just not a night to be relaxing around a campfire. So I retreat here to the van to enjoy this delicious meal that was yet still cooked over a campfire. Let's dig in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. What would man do without campfire? Out here overlanding, living van life, exploring the planet, 
and then you get to enjoy a home cooked meal under a night sky like that. It's so good. And look at that. Italian sausage in meatball form. Oh my gosh. I love Italian sausage. I know I preach that constantly, but hey, everybody else uses ground hamburger, so why can't I use Italian sausage all the time? Because I do. I do. Mmm. I love van life, guys. You know, a lot of people always ask me, how much longer are you going to live in your van? Are you going to do this forever? At this point, what's the point of stopping? I don't see any reason to stop. This is pretty freaking amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think this concludes this episode of Living the Van Life. It has been one heck of a wild adventure. Four days, three nights out here on the trail with lots and lots of endless treasures to be found. I will be back because I have only just yet scratched the surface of what this area has to offer. All right, guys, I'm going to hit the road in search of the next Living the Van Life adventure. Peace out. Keep on trucking.